Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Today I've got some sabotaged muzzleloader projectiles to try out. Uh, this is a 125 grain, 38 caliber cast lead bullet uh, inside of a plastic 50 caliber sabot. Uh, I've always said that the 1 in 24 twist rate rifling in a beta pattern muzzleloader should be fast enough to stabilize sabotaged projectiles, uh, but I've never actually put that assumption to the test, so that's what we're doing today. In principle, sabotaged muzzleloader projectiles offer a couple of advantages. Uh, mainly, they offer higher velocity, which translates into a flatter trajectory. But another advantage is that when the land is really dry at the end of summer and the fire danger is relatively high, uh, shooting patched round balls can actually present a little bit of a fire hazard because uh, sometimes that cloth patch will sort of catch fire and then you'll have a smoldering patch fluttering down out of the air after you shoot that could land in dry grass and start a fire. Whereas when you're shooting a sabotaged round, you don't need a cloth patch, so you don't have that hazard, and the plastic sabot is not going to smolder. Now, of course, I recognize that you're not allowed to hunt with sabotaged projectiles in a muzzleloader only hunting season here in Idaho, and I would imagine in most other states, because they offer an unfair or at least non traditional advantage. Uh, but you could hunt with sabotaged muzzleloader projectiles in a general any weapon hunting season, and you can certainly use them for target practice, which is all that we're going to be doing today. So to start with, I've got a target set up down at 25 yards. I'm going to fire a few shots just to get some idea of what kind of accuracy we're getting out of these. And then, provided that the accuracy is acceptable, uh, I want to try shooting them across a chronograph and see what kind of velocities we're getting. Okay, so first off, ignore these uh, slash marks in the target and the backing paper. Those were already there before I started shooting today. Uh, but anyway, the first three shots that I fired were these three, uh, where I loaded the rifle with 100 grains of Pyrodex. And as you can see, that's a pretty horrible group. It's like 14 inches across at just 25 yards. And then two of the three shots were clearly keyholing. Uh, so that load is not working for us, and I figure there's a couple possible explanations for that. One possibility is that the sabots are breaking apart in the barrel. Uh, they're not able to handle the pressure, and so they're not doing their job, and that's why the bullets aren't stabilizing. The other possibility is that the rifling twist rate just isn't spinning the bullet enough to stabilize it. So I figure, well, if it's the sabot that's breaking apart in the barrel, uh, then I can probably fix that by reducing the powder charge, uh, and thereby reducing the pressure. So I tried loading the rifle with 50 grains of Pyrodex, and I get this group, a much better group. It's kind of hard to tell if the bullets were stable or not. I mean, these look like more or less round holes, but they're not real clean. On the other hand, I figured that if it's a question of spin stabilization, then I might be able to fix the problem by increasing the powder charge, because it's a, a fixed twist rate in the barrel, so uh, the faster the bullet leaves the barrel, uh, the faster its rotational speed will be as well, and the more stabilization it should have. Uh, so I tried loading three rounds with 200 grains of Pyrodex, and the accuracy on those is better than the 100, it's still not great, uh, but what I do notice is that all three of these are perfectly clean, round, 38 caliber holes. But given that the 200 grain loads appear to be stable, I don't think it's a problem with the sabot breaking up in the barrel. Uh, so 
I think what I'll do now is try to fine tune the powder charge a little bit, see if we can find a load that the rifle likes a little bit better, you know, something that'll give us better accuracy at high enough velocity to stabilize the projectiles like the 200 grain loads did. Well, I've tried a few more loads, varying the powder charge up and down a little bit. I haven't really found anything that seems to be significantly more accurate than the 200 grain load. So I think I'm going to try to get a chronograph reading with the 200 grain load, and maybe I can fine tune the accuracy more later. Now that one measured 21.59. That one measured 26.89. And that one measured 24.45. So if I'm doing the math in my head correctly, we're averaging something like 2,400 feet per second. Uh, that's definitely a pretty high velocity to get out of a muzzle loader. Although it's not that much higher than shooting a normal round ball with a, an extra hot powder charge. I feel like I've fired round balls above 2,000 feet per second before. And I guess that makes sense, because a round ball only weighs 180 grains, whereas this is a 125 grain bullet, plus a little weight for the sabot, so something, maybe a 150 grain projectile. So it's not that much difference in bullet weight. It makes sense there wouldn't be that much difference in velocity. Now, of course, the 38 caliber conical bullet uh, has a longer aspect ratio than the round ball, uh, so it's going to have a better aerodynamic ballistic coefficient, which, in addition to the higher velocity, would contribute to making it flatter shooting. But then again, at least so far, I've gotten better accuracy out of the round ball. So, as with a lot of things, it seems like these saboted projectiles have their pros and cons. Uh, I, yeah, I may have to experiment further with them to see if I can realize a little bit more of their theoretical potential. But for today, I think the final thing that I want to do is shoot a gallon jug of water with one of these projectiles and see what happens. Well, definitely can't complain about the amount of damage that these rounds do to soft targets. So, anyway, till next time, thank you for watching the Idahoan Show.